If you're a Giants fan, you gotta hate sports. Loathe them. Despise them. Washington beat the Giants, but it was really the Giants who beat themselves. Dustin Hopkins missed the game-winning field goal, only to get another chance of glory. After this, Dexter Lawrence inexplicably offsides. That can't happen. Hopkins, of course, makes it. Washington steals one from the Giants, and let's be honest, this loss was well-earned. 11 penalties for 81 yards? I thought Joe Judge was all about discipline. That can't happen. That is incredible. After the James Bradbury gorgeous and savvy interception laid, the Giants held for a field goal. Come on, get the first down. Bleed the clock. Win the game. The first and second down, a couple of runs with Saquon on a night where he had nothing, and then a pass behind the sticks, which was dropped, by the way. That's terrible game management. That's a losing mentality. And Darius Slayton had the gap of the night. 23-20 Giants. Fourth quarter, Daniel Jones. Oh, are you kidding me? I mean, this is gorgeous, gorgeous pass. Slain flat out dropped it. Wide open. Hit him in the hands. This after he busted the coverage, you you can't make it up. Great chance to go up by 10. Instead, the Giants kicked the field goal. And two plays later, bam. Taylor Heineke hit Ricky Seals Jones for a touchdown. You can't even kick Daniel Jones around, and I always do. I'm not a Daniel Jones fan. And his first half, he didn't have that internal clock functioning. But I thought Daniel Jones, his second half was great. In fact, for the sake of fairness, I call it the best game we've ever seen from Daniel Jones. And the Giants wasted it. Wasted it. The Giants are 0-2 for the fifth straight season. And look at their schedule. There's no hope in sight. The NFC East is the worst, and that means the Giants are the worst of the worst. It's the residue of design. It's Dave Gettleman. It's even considering and then hiring Dave Gettleman in the first place, and that's on ownership. Last night, the coaching staff, we gave you the play selection at the end, the penalties in Joe Judge. What was that defense with Patrick Graham at the end? I mean, it was just awful. What a giant mess. And for Giants fans, sadly, predictable. Oh, no, 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 no. This is one of my biggest pet peeves. Of course, you're playing the other star quarterback. Embrace it. And look, we've talked to Aaron Rodgers about this topic on many occasions. Lamar Jackson is playing Patrick Mahomes. He has to outscore Patrick Mahomes. That's just the deal. Maybe Lamar wants to distance himself because while it's always cool with Lamar versus Patty, it hardly feels like a fair fight in 2021. And, you know, Mahomes always beats Jackson. And while both are MVPs, Jackson was clearly pressing on Monday Night Football with the Baltimore injuries. And, oh, by the way, the contract looms large, too. Mahomes, meanwhile, was majestic when it mattered the most. Rocking steady and dominance in the fourth quarter, coming back and beating the Cleveland Browns. Patrick Mahomes has literally never lost the game in September. Happy birthday, by the way, Pat. The stats, the feel, it's all been perfect. And it's all a reminder that he is the best quarterback in the game, bar none. You know, when the schedule came out, I was so hyped for this game. Two stud quarterbacks, but I fully expect Mahomes and the Chiefs to beat the Ravens by 7 to 10 points. And maybe that's why Lamar runs away from the comparison. I'm so amped for Justin Herbert taking on Dak Prescott Sunday on CBS. This is going to be an absolute show. And things got much easier for Herbert with the news that Cowboy stud defensive end Demarcus Lawrence broke his foot in practice. That is a killer for the Dallas Cowboys. An absolute killer. And listen, Herbert and Keenan Allen are, simply put, going to take advantage Herbert was sensational at home last year. When you look at the stats, touchdown to interception ratio, obviously he put together the best rookie season ever in the history of the NFL at the quarterback position. But Sunday marks his first ever home game with fans in the stands. And I'm going to be interested to hear and see if there are more Chargers or Cowboys fans filling the stadium. History and precedent says... It's going to be a Dallas advantage. And while the Chargers defense is very strong, I, I love Dak on Sunday. I think Prescott is fantastic. He played brilliantly in the opener, albeit in a loss. The key is Zeke. 
He was a total non-factor against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. He didn't use them. They were scared, rightly so, I get it, of the Tampa defensive line. I want Zeke to get 20 to 25 touches. When he gets those touches, historically, the Cowboys win. I want him to provide a little balance. I want him to catch the ball out of the backfield. I don't believe that Zeke is remotely shot. Sunday feels like a solid time to prove me right. The Lawrence injury is huge. The Chargers are great. You know I have both teams making the playoffs. But I'm sick and tired of excuses for the Cowboys. The division is dreadful. I'm picking Dallas to win. Show some grid. Show some toughness. Go out and get it done. Staying in the NFC East, love or loathe, the Eagles moving to 2 0 with a win against San Francisco this weekend. Low. And I really, I love what I saw from Philly, obviously, in week number one. Nick Seriani deserves a lot of credit, but he's going up against Kyle Shanahan. And listen, the, the Eagles were tough against Atlanta. This San Francisco team is one of the toughest teams in, in the NFL. And Kyle's an offensive genius. And this team is going to be buttoned up. And look, I think that San Francisco, even with Mostert out for the year, I don't even remotely lose any sleep about it if I'm a San Francisco 49ers fan. You know, they are strong in the trenches. And you saw Debo Samuel dominate and Kittle dominated. And I bet you see even more Trey Land. So, by the way, if I'm wrong and Philly wins, I mean, you could color me ridiculously impressed. But this is a step up in class now, going from Atlanta to San Francisco. I'm not worried from a Niner perspective about the game being in Philly. That team is battle-tested. They travel well. The defense is locked and loaded. Philly is not going to 2-0. How about my guy Joe Burrow, love or loathe Joe Burrow, carving up the Bears on Sunday. I love it. Game one was not a fluke. Look, the only pick I regretted last week after an offseason where I was all in on the Bengals was taking Minnesota. And I'm not going to blow it again this week. I mean, Joe Burrow is going to destroy Chicago. Lost in the shuffle with Fields and, and Dalton. Look, that Bears defense was just atrocious against the L.A. Rams. Joe Burrow? He's a perfect stance. You saw Jamar Chase. He was unbelievable. He deserves a ton of credit after a preseason where he had the gifts. T. Higgins is a stud. Mixon's going to run wild. The Andy Dalton revenge game. I mean, you know, it's a former Bengal. It's not as if, you know, he hates him. If anything, they had him entrenched for years. I mean, it's the Andy Dalton love fest game. I mean, Bengals fans love him. Bears fans love him. Play Justin Fields. But I digress. I think Joe Burrow is going to dominate again. Just told you Justin Herbert going to be sensational against the Dallas Cowboys. I love him to go over 302 and a half passing yards against Dallas. I also really like Matthew Stafford to go over his passing yards as well, which is set at just 278 and a half. How about my guy KJ Hamler? Bang the over. 34 and a half receiving yards with Jerry Judy out. How about a pick from Major League Baseball? Give me the over in the Orioles-Red Sox game. And finally, some SEC on CBS. Florida taking on Alabama. Roll Tide. Taylor Heineke and Michael Irvin on the NFL Network last night. And with that said, it's time for Friday edition of Lover Loath. Taylor Heineke thinks he deserves to be the starting quarterback for Washington going forward. I absolutely love Taylor Heineke staying in that role. And look. We talked about this when Fitzpatrick got hurt. We talked about this and why I never would have signed Ryan Fitzpatrick. I think Taylor Heineke is better than Ryan Fitzpatrick, which is why I picked Washington to win the game. I don't think Ryan Fitzpatrick ever plays another down for the Washington football team. Not that I'm going to sit here and crown Taylor Heineke, but he has a ton of confidence. He's a spark plug. You saw him against Tampa, the eventual Super Bowl champs in the postseason last year. Look, the Giants aren't very good, but he completed three quarters of his passes, and he was certainly in command. You know, when he threw that pick, the aforementioned interception to Bradbury, he didn't get rattled, still made the plays late. Ryan Fitzpatrick should never see the field again. In Heineke, we trust that should be the mantra in Washington, D.C. He's going to be entrenched as a quarterback for this season. Jameis Winston to throw for three or more touchdowns against the Carolina Panthers. It's going to be the fall of Jameis. 
And not like the fall, like it's falling apart. Like the autumn of Jameis. I love it. Absolutely love it. And listen, I think he's going to have a similar kind of performance that he did against the Green Bay Packers, where, look, it's going to be an Alvin Kamara game, and there are good matchups. And I think there's going to be a fun competitive contest where New Orleans wins by, let's say, 7 to 10 points. But I think that Jameis, I told you before the season, a sleeper MVP candidate under future Hall of Famer Sean Payton. Yeah. Let's put him in for three more touchdowns this week and no interceptions against Carolina. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe. And don't forget to hit the bell for more videos.